you're watching the Backroom Podcast, and I'm here with Kieran Gillen, uh, most famously to me, a phonogram, but he is also doing, uh, he's got some other works going on, so welcome. Hello, sir. Uh, how's the con going for you so far? Fantastic. It's like my first time at Emerald City Con, and it's, you know, enormous and bustling. Uh, it's a bit strange I'm flying solo, because Jamie has had to cancel, because he's got a Marvel gig that needs to be done very tight deadline. Uh, so I... Um, so I'm by myself on the stand, right. which has led to a kind of like um, solitary confinement type hysteria, <laughs> as anybody who walks past is pretty much assailed by uh, my lack of social skills. But yeah, it's oh, fun. Well it's, done. I like to think I'm terrorising everybody. So you're both working on uh, Marvel projects then? Yeah, it's actually the one he's doing is for Siege Loki, uh, which oh, okay. is uh, actually it's my script. So um, uh, we're actually it's us working together on a Marvel thing, which is interesting because he's. Um, He's like he's bringing a lot of the skills he kind of did with uh, Singles Club to bear. There's okay. like um, there's this big 26 panel grid on one on one, oh, on one wow. page, that kind of stuff. So okay. I just want we, we, he's, we've actually done a mobile thing together. We did a backup for Sword, and that was quite tight. That was compressed, and okay. he, used, he used some of his skills, but wasn't really giving a chance to breathe. And, the, and with Siege Loki, it's, it's opening up completely, so right. uh, it'll be fun. I think it's it feels. I'm not going to say it's Jamie's first real Marvel comic, <laughs> but it feels a bit like it at times. It's very right. exciting. Right, because you got to eyeliner. Loki's wearing eyeliner. Oh, yeah. All right. So that little photogram tie in there. And yes, bit. it's true. <laughs> Seth, nice. Seth Bingo and Loki would get on very well. It's my theory. Oh, you know, interesting. They would, they would cause trouble. Ah. Mm. Well, Loki always does, and then Seth yes, in his so own way. So, yes, perfect. Um, so you also got to do a five-issue mini with for Sword. Yes, it turned out to be a mini in the end. Right. Yeah. And, and then, uh, but now you're doing, you're on Thor full time, right? Yeah. It was. If it, I'm only seven issues on four because it's kind of. Oh, okay. It was. It was deliberately. Um, when, when JMS left the book, um, essentially they need someone to start in immediately. And uh, I already knew Fraction was taking over after me. So I okay. always, you know, and it was said that I would only be on the book for six issues. It's ended up being seven issues uh, because right. uh, I'm doing an issue after Siege, basically. Uh, oh, okay. So another what? So basically to wrap up the whole sort of um, um, move the board into an interesting position and have right. a really big fight to get w against the uh, cyborg claw foil, uh, which is right. good. And then Fraction can jump on in time for the movie. Exactly. You know, Fraction yes. opens on and he got he's got he doesn't need to actually untie all the stuff which uh, you know if it just ended where I ended it before the end of Siege. There's so many questions unanswered. Right. In which case, one more issue to sort of like tie up everything for everyone. Be okay. good. It's, you know, I think I'm really enjoying writing for. Oh, yeah. nice. Are you enjoying working for? With Marvel? Yeah, actually, you know, I, I, I was just, you know, I was trying to Joe earlier, you know, we're just having the time of my life doing this stuff. Oh, I'm <laughs> chatting to Joe. Yes. Let, name drop. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, so I, how do you view that as in versus your creator own work? Oh, they're, di they're different than complementary. I mean, uh, I am my, my next sort of thing that sort of creates yeah. a participation is the, the book I'm doing for Avatar, uh, oh, which okay. should be out like later this year, uh, called The Heat, which is like um, it's a kind of a science fiction cop show set on Mercury. Uh, in that kind of way, and it's about the environment, how the environment changes the actual act of policing, uh, oh. which you know, which I, which you know, right. which is fun, but it's also very much different from phonogram. This is kind of yeah. a much more traditional sort of like comic, in the, okay. instead of being phonogram, which is completely fucking mental. <laughs> um, in a good way, though. Yeah, the thing that I actually said, I couldn't do one more than one book of phonogram at a time because phonogram right. takes a certain part of your brain that just melts otherwise. Right. Um, whilst not that I work any less harder on the Marvel stuff, it's just that you can only do so much because right. um, obviously it's out of your control. It's not like I can have Aries sitting, you know, I'm doing an Aries thing, I'm not going to have Aries sitting down and having a very serious debate about, um, you know, uh, pre Aegean cultural politics sort of right. stuff. And you've got to leave room for the artist to breathe more. Whilst phonogram, this is weird act of obsession. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're different skill sets. Uh, you know, they're different skills, and they're pushing me in different ways. I mean, shit, sorry. E even all the Marvel books I do are very different from each other. It, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, when you're doing Sword and Four at the same time, these are, these, are, these are fundamentally different books. One's like a screwball like comedy, and the other one is this um, Wagnerian Lord of the Rings style epic. Um, you know, yeah, I, I, I'm discovering new stuff about me every day. In other words, I like doing all of it, and I'm glad that I don't have to choose. Oh, very nice. Um, and rest. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, what was your earliest work? What, what did you first get it? What got you into comics? Wow, wow, wow. Um, my first, same as Jamie actually, we both come from the British, yeah, we both come from the British small press scene. So uh, I was doing, um, I came to comics as an adult when I was 25 or so. Uh, I came to comics when I was 25 or so. Uh, and then we 
like six months after getting to comics, I was like doing my own. I came home from my first comic convention, wrote my first script in a drunken haze, and then just taught artists to draw it. And then like the next year at the comic convention, I had a small anthology of like six or seven stories. They were called Hit. As in, basically, each story was based on a different definition of the word hit. And it was like, that was me just trying to see what I could do with the medium. What, you know, could I write comics? Does this work? Does this not work? Uh, and that actually, when I was selling that anthology at the comic convention next year, that's when I met Jamie. Ah. Um, so that's the kind of thing. I did small press work, I did some webcomic stuff. Um, my first work for Hire script was for Games Workshop, which was a 40k comic, like a little five page thing, uh, which was, you know, fun. Uh, you know, a lot of fun, you know, enormous men full of war. Uh, and we, me and Jamie did a, an editorial comic for official PlayStation magazine for like 50 issues. Oh, wow. uh, actually, I'm lying, 49 issues. 49. We wanted to get to the. We, yeah, we wanted to quit, uh, but they sacked us. Uh, it was annoying, we were going to quit on the 50, uh, and they sacked us. Oh, actually, well, they, had, they didn't have the budget anymore because the magazine wasn't selling as well. So it wasn't we were being rubbish. We were quite rubbish. Um, yeah, but that's the kind of stuff. So it's a mixture of like small press and web comics. Like Busted Wonder was, is another one I did, which is this um, www.bustedwonder.com, which is my kind of like gaming esque uh, fairy tale for young, uh, for girls about a fairy circus, uh, and it's mainly about postmodernism or a critique thereof, which is of course a very big topic for 11 year old girls. Uh, so yeah, it's good. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's much like my career now, mixed and random. Very good. Uh, how do you view, like, do you try to travel a lot for the cons? Because obviously coming over to North America takes a lot more effort for you in particular. Or do you try for more European cons? How do you approach that? Yeah. Also, leaving my house takes a lot of effort for me. I, I'm, I'm very, like, you know, lazy. That's the word. Um, I, I, also, I quite like coming over to the American cons because essentially a lot of my work is here. I, I tend to go almost every con inside England. I must admit, I've never gone to a European con, which is, now you mention it, it's, I suddenly feel embarrassed about um, I should. Oh, actually, I've been to an Irish comp, which doesn't really count because it's. It, if you're going west and not to the big island, it doesn't really. Yeah. Um, uh, I've been. What's it, I've been to San Diego like most years, and I went to New York last year. I really, just really like coming over because there's so many of my American friends I only see at a comp. Like it's like Fraction. I haven't seen him since San Diego. I probably won't see him until San Diego now. It's good to see him him again, you know, because he's he's just a really good friend. And that, you know, there's so many people like that who I only see at events like this. So for personal reasons, I like it. And for like, you know, for business reasons, the idea essentially of how much every year I've, I've been to America, it just changes in terms of like what people think of me or where I am or, you know, yeah. It's an interesting way to take stock. I mean, the American guns are just bigger than the British. British ones are like um, men, you know, tiny gathering of men in a pub standing around a dog and, or, you know, that, that kind of thing. Uh, made, everything's made of string, uh, coal powered, that kind of vibe. What's American cons are like, you know, like you see on the telly, you know, there's that kind of vibe. Um, yeah, I'm a, as you say, it's more difficult. The problem is expense. It's not about difficulty, it's about expense. Okay. Um, I would definitely, if somebody else paid for me to come over more often, I, I, I suspect I would come over more often. Um, so, you already mentioned Heat. Uh, do you have any other projects you want to talk about? Uh, not that can I really talk about. It's a weird thing, isn't it? I'm in a position where there's... Contracts? All this stuff is coming along, and it, um, you know, all, all, this, all this stuff is coming to an end, uh, and the new stuff isn't available to talk about yet, really, uh, which is a shame. But, you know, um, uh, the sword trade will be coming out, and the four trade, and all that kind of stuff, uh, which and they're the kind of like the next obvious kind of things. Oh, and an issue of New Mutants, that's oh, coming out as well. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much for coming out. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Thank you much for having me.